I'm so proud to be helping you open the ninth Small Business Summit, um, headed towards a decade of this activity. Um, it should be a goal of ours that when you hit your decade point, uh, when you hit number 10, always on the go, sir. Sorry. <laughs> uh, that uh, we achieve even more progress together. It's a terrific gathering. You're oversubscribed. Um, and Mark and Carmen, uh, I'm just so impressed with the activity you do every day. And I mean every day. Um, I see both of you with such frequency. Um, and you're giving your all. We're very grateful. And um, to the uh, senators and representatives in the audience, the General Assembly has been an incredible partner for Governor Raimondo and, and all of us in the administration. And multiple administration representatives are here. Um, it really is a team effort. Uh, and we're beginning to see the optimism left. Um, we're beginning to see the unemployment drop. Um, we are starting to see the new projects start. Um, and we are starting to see the pessimism dissipate. Um, and uh, it's, it's encouraging. Um, it's really the kind of environment that we all hope for. We have a long way to go. To be sure, as Director Scott Jensen uh, would tell us with precision, uh, we are still suffering from unemployment and we still compete for the worst unemployment rate in New England. Uh, each time the labor stats come out, uh, we uh, either compete for or succeed at achieving that dubious distinction. But we're making enough progress that we can begin to see uh, the storms uh, truly disappearing and the sunshine reappearing uh, in our economy. Uh, why have a small business summit? Um, certainly, the SBA is a convener. It would be hard-pressed to, to choose a different topic. Uh, but that's not the reason that everyone is in the room. You're here because you know that small businesses are the lifeblood of our economy in Rhode Island. Now, you probably have podiums like this and auditoriums like this not quite as nice. All over the country, uh, 49 other places where people say things like small businesses are very important. They're the backbone of our economy. Let me remind you of a few things about Rhode Island's economy, though. There are 96,000 small businesses in Rhode Island, employing 221,000 employees. Rhode, Rhode Island small businesses have created over 4,600 net new jobs in the most recent uh, year of record. So even in the midst of the, uh, of the recession's aftermath, small businesses are churning out the job growth. Nearly half the employers in the state have between one and four employees. Uh, almost half have between one and four employees in Rhode Island. Smaller employers, those with less than 20 employees, represented 90% of all employers in the state and employed a quarter of the workforce. Rhode Island uh, is the 15th ranked uh, among states in the proportion of small employers less than 20 employees as a percentage of total employers. Um, and we're seeing the kind of energy and excitement about our economy and innovation pouring out of disproportionately smaller employers, small businesses. So it really matters uh, what we do to ensure that small businesses succeed in our state. That's, that's why Ray Fogarty spends so much time on the subject. We're grateful for your hosting us here at Bryant, and you're such a tremendous partner. That's why the legislature turns its attention so intensively to it. So what are we doing about it? Well, in the last budget, despite overcoming uh, a budget gap, um, despite uh, the continuing after effects of the Great Recession that Rhode Island uh, has suffered. Uh, despite all of our budgetary challenges, uh, Rhode Island found the way to invest anew in small businesses especially and business in general. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about a few of the things that we've done uh, and how we're proceeding. Um, first, let me set the stage. Uh, this is not, uh, certainly we have experienced turmoil, uh, turbulence, challenge um, uh, in the overextended recessionary period, uh, I would argue, here in Rhode Island. Um, but we also have made some wise decisions, not just in the most recent instant, uh, but in recent generations. And we as Rhode Islanders should be proud uh, of uh, that track record. So let me set, set the stage before I talk about this most recent session. Our favorable tax climate. Um, we have the lowest corporate income tax rate in the Northeast, hard-earned distinction at 7%. Um, in the, I will add, in the recent session, we completely eliminated the 
uh, sales tax on energy, the business energy tax, that can be a 10 or 11 percent tax on energy, energy consumption. Um, it's uh, not an easy task to eliminate a tax entirely, uh, but it's gone, gone forever. And I should note the governor introduced a significant reduction in the energy tax on business in the last session. General Assembly and the governor collaborated to just do away with it, abolish it. Um, we uh, have not raised a major tax, corporate, income, or sales in 20 years. Think about that. Now, we all have, with good justification, I'm one of them, reasons for continuing concern and problems that we identify, but think about that relative tax stability and the fact that at the same time we're axing taxes um, and we're achieving progress. Why do we think that we can maintain that kind of stability going forward? Uh, well, in this past session, uh, we put the final touches on and solidified pension reform that then General Treasurer Raimondo had begun with all of your help, uh, put it to bed. Medicaid reform in a substantial way was undertaken, uh, very impressive. Uh, that These structural reforms will save taxpayers over $4 billion, $4 billion with a B, over the next 20 years, uh, and will ensure future retirement security and will ensure future budgetary stability. That's the platform we're building on, the hybrid of generations of discipline and uh, not raising taxes even when times were tough, the major taxes across the board, not raising them when times were tough, um, and now axing taxes, achieving major structural stability with pension and Medicaid reform and beyond. These are the signs of responsible budgeting um, and uh, sensible fiscal stewardship, and that's why it makes sense looking at the last session, looking at the session going forward, to truly invest in economic development, especially in small businesses, and that's what we're doing. So what are we doing? Well, um, we are creating the first in memory state-funded small business loan pool, $5.4 million, one of the largest single line items in the economic development budget for small business loans. The state hasn't been in this business for a while. Most states uh, uh, that are serious about economic development do have such programs um, and we're, we're offering both traditional small business lending through third-party loan administrators, not the state itself doing the work, but making sure that the loan constellation, the I should say the lending community and the constellation of lenders are conducting the work so we have a permanent infrastructure for this kind of assistance and uh, we even have a micro-lending component to help True entrepreneurs uh, get started early uh, at that micro level, extraordinarily important, important to our entire economy, important to uh, the most vulnerable businesses and fragile businesses, important to African American and Latino businesses. Uh, these are the right kinds of investments for Rhode Island. Um, how do we continue to ensure that the small businesses of our state innovate? Uh, as I mentioned at the top of my remarks, in addition to having a high proportion of small businesses, it's also the fount of innovation. It's where the best ideas come from, uh, the most exciting, dynamic elements of our economy. How do we ensure that that continues? Well, we have a new innovation voucher program. It's uh, appropriate that we're here at Bryant University. Uh, at universities like Bryant and others across our state, uh, we have incredible research and development occurring. Um, Chris Cowan knows it uh, at Polaris because he's constantly hearing about how manufacturers are drawing upon uh, the great innovative uh, sources of information at our universities and for that matter our graduates for uh, their engineering positions and other key positions. Uh, but how do we, how do we glue uh, this system together even better? How do we ensure that there's dialogue between our great academic institutions and our great companies, small and large, the Innovation Voucher Program actually enables a business that's looking for research and development to take that product or service to the next level, enables a business that may have atrophied its research and development function, may no longer or may never have conducted R&D, to connect with a university, to connect with a medical center for that matter, uh, draw down the, the best research, uh, and who pays the bill the state. 
for the first time there's a voucher system where, where that can happen. Um, in addition, uh, there's the terrific Real Jobs Rhode Island program under Director Scott Jensen, where businesses small and large are clustering to avail themselves of the Labor Department, DLT's uh, great resources accumulated from the feds. Scott, how many millions of dollars from the feds thus far for real jobs? Ten. Ten million dollars uh, for these activities. <laughs> uh, this is coming together in uh, the maritime trades, in manufacturing, in financial services, in geographic regions, small and large. Uh, coming together uh, in order to avail themselves of training dollars to bring our workforce in connection with employers in the way that employers define they actually need so that there are real vacancies available to them. Um, we have uh, a couple of other programs that are worthy of note. Um, we have for you today a brochure that looks like this. Uh, we have people received receive these as of yet. They'll be coming around. We can distribute them momentarily, I hope. Um, and these brochures will tell you what our programs contain. You don't have to uh, recite them from memory, we wouldn't mind. Uh, but let me tell you about a couple others. Uh, there's one called the Region Rebuild Rhode Island Tax Credit. That if you're a small business or large and you're engaging in a project uh, that's a real estate project, you're expanding your facility, you're creating more room for more office employees, you're a small manufacturer and you're building out uh, for a new manufacturing line. Uh, we can assist for up to 20% of project costs with a new tax credit. can even escalate to up to 30% of project costs. Um, in addition, we have a new Qualified Jobs Incentive Act. Uh, Lynn and Marie know this, uh, this piece of legislation very, very well. All the senators and representatives know it very well. Uh, we're especially grateful to Representative Shikashi for uh, introducing this bill. Uh, the, the Qualified Jobs Incentive Act provides a tax credit on a per-job basis that, under the right criteria, can enable a company to receive back from the state of Rhode Island the personal income taxes generated by new jobs. You heard me right. The state of Rhode Island can pledge back and pay back the personal income taxes generated by new jobs when a company adds a certain number of jobs under the rules of the program. Uh, well, does this work for smaller employers? We're very proud of the fact that our, our own Rhode Island manufacturer, Raystone of Lincoln, Rhode Island, uh, which is a small bat manufacturer by most definitions, only 226 employees, uh, that this manufacturer is poised to add 25 jobs that they might have added in their Virginia plant instead because the costs were cheaper in Virginia but avail themselves of the new qualified jobs incentive, and they're gonna create these 25 well-paying manufacturing jobs here in Rhode Island. So, <laughs> that's just the start. That's just one in the pipeline coming out the other end. Uh, there are multiple more. There are 30 applicants to our Rebuild Rhode Island Tax Credit Program already. The Innovation Voucher Program that I've described to you is probably oversubscribed. We just hit our first deadline, and we were grateful for the abundance of applicants. There are more rounds to come, and hopefully in future budget years, more dollars to commit. Um, but uh, how do you access all of this? So I'm giving you a brochure. It lays out these various programs with their various titles and explains the basic rules. Uh, but how do you get in touch with us, and how do you figure out what to do? Uh, well, standing up in the back is Liz Tanner. Uh, Liz Tanner runs our Business Navigation Center at the Commerce Corporation. That's uh, concierge service for businesses. How is it a concierge? We will walk you through our programs. We will help you access them no matter what agency they're in. We'll help you troubleshoot. We'll help you get a roadblock on route to a license or a permit. We'll help you obtain those grants or those incentives. Um, we set up the Business Navigation Center uh, within the last six months, Liz, in the last quarter of 2015, the quarter just concluded, there were over 3,000 interactions by business people in Rhode Island with our Commerce Corporation uh, Navigation Center. There were nine, a, a 785 unique businesses uh, that availed themselves of our resources. Uh, we're very proud that it's already working in that there's percolating interest and there are people reaching out and asking about our various programs. 
I want to note something else uh, extremely important. We've established an advisory council with the largest chambers of commerce, several of which are represented here today, on it, and Mark Hayward himself serves on that council so that we're not just conducting this work in a vacuum, um, creating programs and declaring victory, uh, mm -hmm. acting as if we're making progress. Instead, we're self-critiquing with representatives of the business community, chambers of commerce, and the SBA, and others right at the table, sharing with us the concerns, uh, watching the output, making recommendations. So I'm so proud of the direction we're headed in. I'm, I'm, I'm so optimistic about where we can go. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I know you know this. Uh, we are in pursuit of larger deals when they're available. That'll take a, a heavy pursuit uh, and will take thousands of contacts with major employers right here in Rhode Island and beyond uh, to achieve uh, more progress on those fronts. But the true growth of the economy is achieved through the day-to-day -day victories of smaller businesses expanding by three jobs, seven jobs, 25 jobs. Um, and that's what we're working on every single day with you. We welcome your comments, your inputs, and we look forward to uh, even more advancement with your support. Thank you. Secretary said that he would take questions if anybody has any. Show that this is a very shy group. Questions? Yes, I do. Representative Diaz. Thank you. Uh, I would like to know if you have any provision for a small business bilingual. We have a company in the who uh, English is not a first language. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Representative. Thank you for all of your leadership and support. Uh, we do. We have, we have a brand new website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Latino entrepreneur's website that's fully bilingual, 100% uh, Spanish and 100% English available for all of the content. Um, it's a brand new Commerce Corporation website available through a link at the Commerce Corporation website, uh, commerceri.com or directly. Um, and it provides all of the uh, programming that's available uh, for small businesses and for that matter for larger businesses um, through the Commerce Corporation and our partners and affiliates. Uh, right there on the website. We're taking pains and we're making major investments to ensure that uh, our uh, Latino and Latina entrepreneurs and business owners uh, and business people are uh, able to avail themselves of our resources. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? Senator Pachado. Just a question, just a follow-up to that. How are you embracing uh, diversity uh, not only the industry, but the diversity of the population as it continues to evolve at the same time. And there's only, as you mentioned, but how the plan of uh, I've described to you how we are ensuring that there's uh, language-based access that's available. We're creating more and more programs like the small business lending program that I described, uh, the, uh, the micro-lending program that I described for the smallest of businesses. Uh, but beyond the programs and the statements and pronouncements, it's really uh, the, the most important thing to share with you is that we're becoming a full force commerce corporation. Uh, that agency among our seven or so agencies that are commerce affiliated uh, is really the engine that needs to carry out these programs, ensure that we're reaching entrepreneurs of every background, of every neighborhood, of every part of our state. Um, and that's what we're gearing up to do. Uh, we've gotten our budgetary figures up to uh, the levels that were pre-recession for our commerce corporation. So we're gonna be disciples we're going to be disseminating uh, this information and ensuring that uh, every community has access to these opportunities. Any additional questions? Going once, twice. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. And